In this video, I'm going to show you what to do to create a weave pass on aluminum. I don't use this method every day, but it does come in handy on certain applications. Thank you so much for tuning in. I've got some great close-up arc shots for you. And if this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell. That way you get notified every time I release one of these videos. Okay, let's get to it. In today's video, I'm running the HTP Invertig 221. It's an ACDC machine and HTP sent me this to use in uh, my videos. I can't thank them enough, this thing's awesome. So they sent me the 221 Invertig, the Arctic Chill Cooler, I got a 25 foot torch, this is the uh, number 20 with uh, SCC or SSC low profile foot pedal, 25 foot. Awesome. All right, so the settings I was using in this video, my frequency at first was at 200, then I turned it down to about 120, uh, just because it was super annoying. And then my balance was actually around 70 to 75. So this is the material that I used. It's 0 0.160-5052 aluminum. And that's about 5.30 seconds thick. And started off, I just weld an outside corner. And then, just to keep it there and practice. So then I welded a root pass right here. Then a double. And then a triple weave. And then all this other stuff is just different settings I was testing. You can see there's slight different colorings and um, etch widths and stuff. That's just afterwards. In this video you'll see a lot of junk in the puddle as I'm welding and that's just because I didn't take the time to prep it right. Um, I was just using this to show so if you're practicing or just messing around I usually don't clean it. It doesn't really matter to me but if it's a live part make sure you clean it. You know, uh, wire brush it, clean it again and then you'll be good to go. So let's pretend this is your root pass. That center line is where the two pieces come together and then where you're pointing your um, tungsten should be about 45 in here. And you want this bead to be as even as you can so that your weave comes out nice. Now I've got to ask you guys one question. You want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? In all these clips I'm moving slower than I normally weld. Uh, and that's just so you guys can get a clearer picture of what I'm doing. And that gets me wondering, what type of TIG are you using? Are you using an inverter or a transformer? Uh, let me know in the comments below and uh, it'll help me tune these videos for you. So if you've welded stringers before, you know that instead of welding right here pointing your puddle, right on this crack, you're actually overlapping, well, you'd start at the bottom, right about here, about 10%. So that way you get a basic overlap of uh, 20%. So it'll be like this. And your second bead, there's the top of it on a stringer, be like this. And then this top one, you're gonna be 10% down from that, so it'll overlap right here. So that way you get a nice overlap right here and there's no lack of fusion there. All right, so once you have your root pass, instead of doing stringers, if you're doing the weave, you're gonna do basically that same thing that you did on the stringers. You're gonna find that 10% that's right here and right here. And you're gonna start your bead so that it's overlapping above this. The top point of it is just above that. And then to start out, you're gonna go straight up to this 10%, so that way it overlaps this bead right here. And then you're gonna come down, and the first one you're only moving just barely. And it'll overlap this quite a bit. But once you get that first one, then you're moving to that next 10% and overlapping this one by another 10%.
kind of like that. So your V's will look like this. This is all where you're pointing your tungsten. So you see it never goes above where the top of that root passes and it never goes below where the bottom of that root passes. And then each width of this is dependent on overlapping. So you want it to overlap just a little bit each time. All right, so I switched from 200 hertz like I had on that root pass to 120 hertz. And this isn't as annoying at all, and that's why I switch. You can see how I'm holding at that 10% up at the top and adding filler like I was saying. Try to add the same amount of filler with each dab to keep it even. When you're doing a weave, you're saturating the part with heat, so you're constantly letting off the pedal as you go. So now we're going to talk about the tri-weave. Just pretend this has that double weave in there. And what you're going to do is, same thing, that 10% and that 10% at the top and bottom. So you're going to start out, and then you're going to move up, and when you get to the halfway point of this, you're going to add another drop a filler and when you're adding in the center you're just doing just a little bit because you come up add this one it overlaps when you come back down you're barely overlapping so when you're adding right here you're almost basically hitting this twice as much as you are on the outside so you only need half as much filler and then you come down to that 10 percent add filler so it's going to look like this Boop. And um, oh, right here. And each one of these is the same width that you are moving on your double weave. So it's not much, you know, it's maybe an eighth of an inch, whatever you figured out for that last one. So you're going to move, add, move 10%, move, add, move 10%, move, add 10%. So you can see these middle ones are almost touching and that's why you don't add very much filler there. And you just continue on like that. Now doing weaves like this puts a ton of heat into your part. So if you're doing this like as an actual part, the most I do for a real one is the double weave and I'm just hauling when I do it, just boom, 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 boom. That way you're not soaking it with heat. Because this is 50-52 aluminum, so it doesn't matter as much if you overheat it. But if you're running 60-61, it loses all of its strength properties. So you really just want to do stringers on 60-61. The only time I do triple weaves on aluminum for real parts is if I am just have to fill something up and grind it down. Alright guys, that's everything I could think of about weaves. I hope this helped you, and if it did, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Get ready for some more videos that I'll have coming out soon. Please share this with some buddies if you think it would help if they're trying to learn some weaves. Let me know what you'd like me to make videos on, and ask me any questions in the comments below. I try to get back to every comment I can. And finally, if you love aluminum TIG like I do, be sure to check out some of my uh, Instagram, at 5th Street Fab and watch some of my other videos that should be 
somewhere around here. All right, have a good one, guys.